welcome to this new tutorial on my channel on how to make this cute little dinosaur bookmark. And as you can see, you will have this little dinosaur sitting on top of your book. And on the other end, you will have this little white circle just to keep the bookmark in place. And also you can decide yourself what kind of color combination you want for the dinosaur. So I've made a green one right here, but here's another example. So you can make pink little spikes as well. You could make the base a different color. You can make these spikes all in different colors. So there's quite some creativity there. So do whatever you want. I hope you will like the video. If you like it, don't forget to give the thumbs up. This would help me a lot. And if you get any questions during the video, you can comment them down below and I will respond to them as quickly as possible. And let's get started. I'll be using this color combination for the example in this video. So I'll be using light green for the base, dark green for the spikes and white for the chain. And the yarn I'm using is a combination of 60% cotton with 40% acrylic. You'll need a crochet hook. I'm using a three millimeter hook, scissors, a darning needle, safety eyes. These are five millimeters, some glue for attaching the eyes and some stuffing. All right, so we're going to start in our base color and we're going to start right here and work our way down like this. So grab the color that you're going to use for that. For me, that's light green. And we're going to start off by making a magic circle. If you're not entirely sure how to do this, I've got a separate video on my channel explaining how I'm always doing it. And I will link it down below in the description. All right, so now for the first round, we're just going to do five single crochet into the magic circle. So we're going to go into the circle, grab the yarn. Now you got two loops on your hook, grab the yarn once again and pull through the two loops. That's your first single crochet. We're going to do that four more times. And five. So once you got a total of five single crochet, we can close the magic circle. That was it for the first round. All right, so before we start on the second round, I would like to clarify that I will not be using a stitch marker because I feel like this is such a small project that it would just be in the way for me. So I prefer to count, but you can do whatever you want, of course. If you are using a stitch marker, you can put it in the last stitch that you're doing for each round. All right, so now for the second round, we're just going to do one increase in each of the five stitches. So we're going to do a total of five increases. And because of that, we're going up from a stitch count of five to a stitch count of 10. So let's do that. Find your first stitch of the round. If you're not sure which one it is, you can always count back. So this is the last stitch that we did. So this is one, this is two, three, four. So five, that's the first one right there. So go in there. This one's always a little difficult for me, but here you go. And we're going to do an increase. So first do a single crochet. Now, because we're going to do an increase, we're going to go back into the same space and do another single crochet in there. Okay, do that four more times. So at the end of this round, you should be having a total of 10 stitches. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That means that we're done with the second round. Now for the next two rounds, so for round 3 and 4, we're just going to do one single crochet in each of the 10 stitches that we got around. So we're going to do a total of 20 single crochet if you're counting stitches. Or you're going to move your stitch marker twice if you're using a stitch marker. So let's do that and I will meet you at the end of round four. Alright, so once you're done with round four, it should look something like this. And now for round five, 
We're first going to do one single crochet in the next three stitches. Then we're going to do two decreases. And after that, we're going to do another three single crochet. So let's do that together. We're first going to do one single crochet to the first one, one into the second and one into the third. After that, we're going to do a decrease. And for a decrease, we're going to grab the front loops of the next two stitches only. So if you see the V like this, this is the front loop on the left and this is the back loop. And of the next two stitches, we're just going to grab this left loop right here of the V. I hope that's clear. So you're just going to go underneath the front loop right here. Keep that on your hook. Go underneath the front loop after that as well. Now pull through these front loops till you got two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through these two loops. That's an invisible decrease. We're going to do one more. So for the next two stitches, grab the front loops only. So go underneath here, keep that on your crochet hook. Move underneath the second one as well. And make a decrease. All right. Now we're going to do three more single crochet. So into the next one, do a single crochet. And do two more. All right, so that was it for round five. And now you should be having a total of eight stitches around. And now is a perfect moment to start with your stuffing because for the next round, we're gonna do more decreases. So the hole will become smaller. So let's put this little yarn end in there already. And grab some stuffing. And I always like to just push it, this in with uh, my scissors. And just... Remember that you can always add stuffing later here as well. But I just like to make a start here. So this is good enough for now. Now we can start doing round six. And for round six, we're first going to do one single crochet in the first two stitches. Then we're going to do two decreases and we're going to finish by doing another two single crochet. All right, so let's do that together. Do one single crochet into the first stitch. Do one into the second. Now do a decrease for the next two stitches. So grab the front loops only. And do a decrease. Now let's do one more decrease. And we're going to finish by making two more single crochet. So that was it for round six, and now you should be having a total of six stitches around. Now for the next two rounds, so for round seven and eight, we're just going to do one single crochet in each of these six stitches that we got around. So if you're counting stitches, you'll be doing a total of 12 single crochet. If you're moving your stitch marker, you will be moving it twice. All right, so let's do that, and I will meet you at the end of round eight. All right, so once you're at the end of round eight, it should look something like this. And now to finish off, we're just going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch. So go in there, grab the yarn and pull it through the loop on your hook all at once. Now you can cut off the yarn, leave some into it. And then you can pull it through just like that. Now is the last moment where you can add stuffing. So grab some stuffing and the hole will be quite small right now. So I'll be using my scissors again to get it in there. 
right? So right now I'm still making sure that it's going to the head of the dino because it, um, I didn't stuff it enough. And I will make sure that the neck, that there's um, some stuffing going on in the neck as well. And you can just make it as firm as you would like. All right, so once you're happy with that, we can already start shaping the head a little bit because as you can see, it's still a bit flat, but you can just push it between your fingers right here. And because of that, the shape will change and it will look more like a face like that. Also, by doing this, you might find out that you would like to add some more stuffing. But I think that's okay for me right now. So now we can do the closing part right here. For that, grab your needle, your darning needle, and attach that to the yarn end, which is still attached to the face. And here, we're just going to weave our needle through the middle loops of the six stitches that we got around. So we're going to go in here, in there, in there, all the way around to close it. So for example, I'm going to go underneath this first middle loop. Go like this. Now for the second one right here, I'm going to go into the other direction. To the opposite direction. Now for the next stitch I'm gonna go like this again. Go like this and just do this all the way around. So a total of six times. All right that's it. Now you can pull the yarn end and now to secure it, we can make a knot into it. So what I always do for that is I find this random loop on my work. So for example, this one right here. So a loop close to the yarn end on your work. Pull through there, but not entirely. Make sure that there is a little loop remaining here. Then you go into the loop with your darning needle. And by doing that, you're creating a knot. Okay, pull that tightly. Now move your darning needle close to this yarn end into your work. Okay, make it come out somewhere randomly on the other end, for example. Pull it through there. And then you can cut it off. And now the base is finished. Now we can already put in the eyes. We're not going to glue them in yet because otherwise there might um, get some glue onto our crochet hook or onto our needle. We don't want that. So we're just going to place them as a reference for where we want to put these spikes. Okay, so we're going to put the eyes right in between round three and four. So let's look for the first eye. This is the first round. This is the second round, this is the third round, and this is round four, so we're going to put it right in between there. So for example, right here, just push it in there. If you've stuffed it more firmly, this might be a little more difficult, but if you just wiggle it through there, it should work. Like this. And now for the second eye, we're also going to put it in between round three and four. And we're going to make sure that there are five stitches in between there. So what I always like to do is to just count holes going from the first eye. So let me show you. So here we put the first eye. This is the first hole from the first eye. This is the second one. This is the third one. This is the fourth one. This is the fifth one. And we're going to want to put it into the fifth hole going from the first one. So put it right in there. Oops. So one, two, three, four, five. So 
Just push it in there. And then it should look something like this. As you can see, I'm still shaping the head a little bit, so I'm pushing it however I want. You can still do that as well, of course. But I think I like it like that. So that's going to be the position for the eyes. So we're going to keep it like this. Now we can go ahead and make these spikes. All right, so for making the spikes, we're going to do the same thing four times. So we're going to make them separately and after that we're going to attach them to our work. So grab the color that you're going to use for the spikes. For me that's dark green. And we're going to start off by making a magic circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a slip stitch. So go into the magic circle, grab the yarn and pull it through like this. Now chain one. Now we're going to do a slip stitch into the slip stitch that we did. So that might sound a bit confusing, but this is the chain one that we did. And right here is the slip stitch that we did. So we're going to go back right here. We're going to go underneath the front loop only. So this left loop right here. So go in there. And we're going to do a slip stitch in here. So grab the yarn, pull it through, and pull it through the loop in your hook as well. And we're going to finish by doing a slip stitch into the magic circle. All right, so that's it. It's really small, as you can see. And also, before you close the magic circle, I find it more helpful to first cut off this yarn, leave some into it and to pull it through because otherwise um, it will be a little difficult to do that since this is really tight slip stitches are really tight so it might be difficult to close them um, to pull this one through that was difficult all right so now you can close the magic circle Just like that and I always like to pull these strings quite tightly as well to make the spike really small like that and that's your first little spike right here we're going to do um, this three more times so I will see you again once you got a total of four of these spikes all right, so once you got four of them, we can start attaching them to the face. And we're going to put these spikes onto row two, three, five, and seven. So right here, this is the first round. We're going to put one spike onto the second row, one onto the third row. Here we're going to skip one, one onto the fifth, and one on row seven. All right, so... Let's do that together. Grab your work and the first little spike that you would like to attach. And we're going to look on the back of our work. So this is the front onto the back. We're going to look for the stitches which are close to the middle. OK, so this is the first round. This is the second round. And here for the second round, we're going to look for the stitch right above it, close to the middle. And right underneath it, close to the middle. It doesn't need to be in the middle perfectly because that's quite impossible. Since it's so small, you won't really have a stitch that it's perfectly in the middle. So we're just going to bring it close to the middle. All right, so I think I want to put one end right here. And one end right there, right there. It doesn't really matter. Um, I think I'm going to put it right there. All right, so first we're going to go into a stitch, which is close to the stitches where we want to put the first spike. So, for example, right here. And we're going to come out of the stitch where we want to put one end of the little spike. So, that's the one right here. Now grab 
one end and pull that one through the stitch that you had on your hook like this. Now we're going to go into this same space again and look for the stitch right underneath here, which is also close to the middle. So I'm going to pick this one right here. I'm going to pull it through. All right. So that's our first little spike right here. Also, when we will secure them, they will start to look better. Trust me. So that will still improve. Now for the second spike, we're going to put it onto the third row. So this is one, two, this is three. And we're going to put one end in the same space where we uh, that we used for this first spike right here. And then we're going to um, use one stitch underneath it in the middle for the other end of the spike. So for example, these right here. So again, go in somewhere else randomly close to the stitches that you will be using. Come out of here. Grab one end of the spike and pull it through there. Go into this same random space and move one row down into the stitch which is closest to the middle. And pull this other yarn end through there. Alright, so here are the first two spikes. Now for the third spike, we're going to put that one onto row five. So we're going to skip one row and go right here. So we can count from the top as well to make sure. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to put it right above here. And I think this stitch right here is in the middle. And then I can, I can pick either this one or this one. So I'm first going to move somewhere randomly, okay, come out of this stitch right here, which is on top of round five. And I'm going to pull through this one yarn end. Then I'm going to go back into the same random space and decide which stitch I'm going to use for a middle stitch. I think I'll be using this one right here. Like that. And now for the last one, we're going to put that one onto round seven. So counting from the top, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is round seven down here. So let's see, move in somewhere randomly. Okay, the side on the stitch closest to the middle. I think that's this one right here. Okay. At one end of your spike, pull it through there, go back in here, move one row down, and pull through the other yarn end. Okay, now just check whether you like the position of your spikes. So whether it's like kind of in the middle, whether you like it. And if you do, we can start tying all of these yarn ends together. And I think I like the position how they are in right now. So I'm going to keep it like this and I'm going to start tying them together. So for that, grab the first two strings coming out of the same stitch so that those are these, for example. Okay, grab the two yarn ends and just make a double knot into them. And I always like to tie these 
um, quite tightly together so that the spikes are really secure um, and just make a double knot into them like this let's do that again so grab the two yarn ends make a knot into them just simple like this pull that very tightly and then make another knot into it to secure it just like that Okay, we're going to do that for all of them. So grab the next two strings coming out of the same stitch. Make a double knot. Like that. Now for the last one. Just like that and now we got all of these yarn ends still coming out of our work we can just simply cut them off so cut them really short like that and then we can push them into our work i do that with my scissors just make sure it's not really that visible anymore so you can as you can see i'm pushing it indirectly i also go into another stitch and try to move the strings away from this hole right here all right so once you're done with that this is the result and this is what the spikes look like now we can start making the chain all right so going to start off right here and after that, we're going to make the chain. So for that, grab the color of yarn that you're going to use for the chain and make a magic circle like this. And we're going to make the circle by simply doing 10 single crochet. So let's do that. One, two, And 10. Now we can close the magic circle. Like that. And now to finish it off, we can do a slip stitch into the first stitch that we did. So that's the one right there. Go in there and make a slip stitch. So now the little circle is already finished and we can make the chain. And for the chain, I'll be making 50 chains. However, you can decide um, on that for yourself because you just want to make it just as long as the uh, book that you're going to use it for. So you want to make sure that the length going from here all the way to the end of the chain is the same length as your book. So for me, that's 50 chains. So I will meet you once you got your length. All right, so once you got your desired length, you can cut off the yarn. And make sure that you're leaving quite some into it because we're going to have to use that for sewing it onto the dyno. So something like this. And now let's first hide this little yarn end here. So grab your darning needle. And attach it to the yarn end. And just go somewhere randomly. So I insert my needle close to the yarn end. Then I just push it through the circle going into the, um, to the other side like this. Then I push it through there. Okay. And 
and you can already cut it off. So that was it for the little circle. Now let's attach our darning needle to the other yarn end. And we're going to attach that one to the dinosaur. So we're going to attach it to the bottom. And I always like to just grab first um, one string from kind of close to the middle, but a little bit to the side like this. Okay, pull through there. Now I'm gonna look for another string, also kind of in the middle, but a bit on the other side of the bookmark. So for example, right there. And I'm gonna pull it through there as well, like this. And now I'm going to pull my needle through the last chain that we did. So here, Maybe it's a bit hard to see on camera, but here is the last chain that we did. I'm just going to go underneath there, underneath those, that little V, like this. Doesn't need to be perfect, like that. Now don't pull it through entirely, just a little bit, till you get this little loop right here. Then we're gonna insert our needle right through there. Okay, pull it through. And now we're gonna pull it very tightly. So give it a lot of strength, pulling this together. And by doing that, we've just secured the string to our little dinosaur. So now we can go into our work close to the yarn end. So for example, example right here okay now come out of the other side of your work so for example right there okay pull it through there like that and then you can cut off the yarn and now the string is attached to our little dinosaur so now it's almost finished. The last thing we're gonna have to do is to glue in the eyes. So for that, grab your glue. And we're gonna pull out one of the eyes first. And when you're doing that, just remember the stitch where you have put in the eye before. So it's probably also visible because the hole is bigger than the others. And now right into this hole, I just put some glue. Like that. And then I'm gonna grab the eye and just push it in there. Like that. And that's already it. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So pull out the eye, put some glue in there. And push the eye back in there. And now the eyes are attached as well. So now our little dinosaur bookmark is finished and I'm so happy with it. I hope you like your result as well. If you liked the video, don't forget to give the thumbs up. This would really help me a lot. And if you would like to see more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I hope I will see you in another video. So thank you for watching and see you.